Hi, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about Gnaw and Tig. That's Gnaw, G-N-W, and Tig, T-I-G. These are operating system abstraction libraries that I wrote in the 90s to basically hide away all the ugliness and inconsistencies and just kind of dumbness of the operating systems on various microcomputers at the time. So let me explain why I'm talking about this. I know I mentioned yesterday when I was talking about rags to riches, I mentioned Gnaw. I've done, I've mentioned Gnaw and Tig in previous uh, videos. So I kind of want to walk through what I did. And I promise you there are fun anecdotes that have nothing to do with programming. So back when I was doing my GURPS apps, I did them in Super VGA and it was my first foray into it. It wasn't, you know, professional, but I wanted to learn how it worked. That's when I first started having to do the bank switching, which to remind you is the way memory is mapped on a PC. You could write into PC memory and it would appear on the screen, but the size of the memory was only 64K, but you needed a lot more than that for Super VGA. So they invented bank switching. So you'd write into that 64K memory, it would go up on the screen in a certain portion, and then you could bank switch and it would move where the memory on the PC was mapped to the screen. So you could, that, that's the only way you could draw anywhere on the screen you wanted. Bank switching was a pain. It required assembly code. It was different for every video card. I just really wanted it to not be something I had to think about every day. So I wrote a little library called grlib for graphics library and grlib encap encapsulated the bank switching. And I used that for my GURPS apps. So when I started doing rags to riches, I already had something like that. And I started expanding it because for the GURPS apps, I think I used the, micro the uh, Windows uh, mouse uh, drawing routines, but on rags to riches, we wanted our own mouse. So I had to draw it myself, mouse pointer on the screen. So this meant that when I went to go draw the mouse pointer, it also had to understand bank switching. And so I'm like, ah. so I moved all the mouse routines into this library I had. Well, that was for moving the mouse and drawing it. Well, when you press the mouse it, and it would, you'd get a, you know, a click or a double click, I moved that in there as well. So that meant there was an input event queue. There was a, uh, whenever I would see one of these events, I throw it in the queue. So the game could then look at that queue and go, Oh, look, there was a mouse click here at this location or double click at this location. Well, once I had that, it occurred to me, well, I should probably do keyboard events the same way. And for keyboard events, it was like, you know, if you hold a key down, I wanted to know that if you released it, I wanted to know that if the key was held down. So it started repeating the letter. I wanted to know that. So I put all that in there and that all went into this event queue. So now this library is more than just video drawing, bank switching. It was mouse and keyboard abstraction and an event queue. And then that's when I realized on DOS, uh, which is what all this was written for, they only provided a timer that I did think did a 10th of a second, which was not enough to do animations. If you wanted a 30 frames per second game or a 60 frames per second game, a 10th of a second timer is not enough. There was a millisecond timer, but it needed assembly. I didn't want ugly assembly in my beautiful C code. So again, the library was expanded and now there was a millisecond timer in there. That's pretty much the state it was when I did rags to riches. It was a library that I just tried to hide things in. So my game code for rags to riches what didn't look messy. When I started making engines after rags shipped engine, one of which would become fallout. I actually formalized all this. I took all those different abstractions and I smooshed them together in one library called GNAW, GNW. It stood for GNAW's not windows. Yes, it was front end recursive because that's how programmer humor rolls. I was really excited about Ganal because suddenly, once I had everything in there and Ganal was by itself compiling, it, was, it had all the DOS stuff in there, my code 
looked very clean and operating system independent. To test this, uh, Chris DeSalvo, the guy who stayed up all night with me while we were doing, while I was coding rags to riches and he was helping me, he said, I'll do a Mac version. We're test your theory. He took Gnaw home over one weekend, came back in with pretty much 90% of Gnaw Mac. I think I remember color cycling wasn't working because Macs handled color palettes differently, but most of it was. And we took that Mac and all and we recompiled what was then the, the very early fallout code to run on a Mac. And it worked. We had fallout running on a Mac like that. Chris Jones later took the GNAW code and made a Windows version of it so we could run on Windows 95. And he did that in a few weeks, which meant we now had Fallout running on Mac and Windows and DOS. And it, I don't want to say it was free, but it was a lot easier to make those extra ones than what other people had dealt with in the past. So I started sharing GNAW with other teams. I know... The Star Trek team used it, Max, uh, the mechan mechanized armored exploration game. There are several of the Sim games, Sim Ant, Sim Earth, Sim City. We were making Sim City 2000, and all. those all used them. Um, it was interesting because I had regular meetings with the executive producer, and he told me not to waste my time because no one reused software. And I said, well, you've already got five or six projects here that are using it and are dependent on my library, so I'm going to keep doing it. Now, a lot of funny things happened about Ganal, um, but one of the funniest ones was, I think it was marketing. Someone decided we should have a Windows 95 sticker on the box for Fallout. I know I've told this story in the GDC talk. So we submitted it. And I was like, this is going to pass easy because we are completely Windows 95 compliant. In fact, we're generic Windows compliant. So I was shocked when it came back unapproved. And I read through the report. And the reason for the unapproval was it ran on Windows NT. I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? So I remember talking. I, ca I called the... Uh, testing place and I talked to someone and she told me yes you're being you're disqualified from the Windows 95 logo or sticker or whatever it was on the front of the box because you are supposed to degrade gracefully on Windows NT to get that logo you have to degrade gracefully on Windows NT and I said we degrade the most gracefully of all we run flawlessly and she said nope that's not what we mean it's not supposed to work I was like, why would you want it not to work? She goes, if you want the logo, you have to make it not work. And I was like, I don't really care about the logo. So, oh, well. So I was just prepared to let it go. But someone, and I don't remember who, someone in Interplay was like, no, we're getting that logo. So I didn't want to put anything in the game that would go like, your Windows NT don't work. So I asked Chris Jones to put that code in the installer. So if you attempted to install Fallout, on Windows NT, it would go, nope, that's an invalid target operating system. Here's where it got funny. My experience writing critical error handlers on Stonekeep had shown me that there were some CD-ROMs out there that were terrible. They would just not read data, or they'd sometimes read it and sometimes not, especially if near the edges, the outer edge or the inner edge of the CD, or the outer rim or the area near the spindle, sometimes it wouldn't read it correctly. So you'd have to read it multiple times. And I had that code in Fallout. But I realized that if people ever had trouble during installation with data reading, it would be a lot easier if there was some method of just doing it by hand. So there was a way of installing Fallout by bypassing the installer, by just taking the DAT file and copying it by hand to your hard drive and then copying over the executable for DOS or Windows or Mac, whatever you were going to run, and just run that. And that would work. Turns out, we could do that. We suggested that to people for NT. We're like, oh, is the installer not working for you? Just copy it by hand. It'll work. So we got the logo. 
people with Win NT had an alternative way of installing it. Everybody was happy. The irony was Windows 95 got phased out and all the windows starting with Windows 2000 going forward were all Windows NT based. So the installer wouldn't work for them. Luckily, you could just hand copy it and Fallout continues to be run to this day. Later, when I was running my own company at Troika, I learned my lesson. And I remember I left all the code behind. I rewrote an entire library called TIG, T-I-G, which stood for TIG isn't GNAL. So not only was it forward and back, for front letter and back letter recursive, but TIG did a lot more than what GNAL did. TIG handled bit depths, any bit depth you wanted. So you could do 64480, 24-bit, 32-bit color. It handled memory. Um, you could have it handle memory for you, or you could say, hey, I've made my own buffers. Here they are for my windows. It just did a lot more stuff. Um, side note, at one point when Interplay thought I had stolen code, I invited them over. Fergus came over with a programmer and they went through all my TIG code. And the pro I still remember the programmer looked at Ferg and said, this is totally brand new. This isn't anything from Ganal. In fact, it's better. I kind of wish we could do some of this stuff. Funny time. But here's the thing I just want to throw out there. Because of TIG and Ganal, it's very easy to port games like Fallout and Arcanum because they're not operating system dependent. I was curious about this a few months ago. So I took Arcanum, because I have the source code, and I recompiled it on a modern C compiler for Windows 10 and whatever version of DirectX we're up to now. And it works. I have Arcanum running on Windows 10 as a native app. If I can do that to Arcanum, anybody can do that to Fallout. Because Fallout's based on GNAL. You make you bring GNAL up to modern spec, and you should be able to recompile the whole thing for whatever operating system you want. Windows 11, Windows 12, whatever's coming down the pipe. That's why I made that, because I didn't want to have to deal with operating systems and their, them being upgraded. So I'm hoping something like that happens. I'm not going to do it, but my experiment with Arcanum proves that it's possible. So going forward, whenever I talk about Fallout or Rags to Riches or Arcanum or Temple, you're going to hear me throw out the words Ganaw and TIG. That's what I'm talking about. And that's my programming video for a while.